Effective construction contract administration will accelerate your career and make your construction projects run more smoothly. And in this video, I'm gonna give you some tools and techniques you can use to effectively manage your construction projects. This is part three of a three-part series we've done on construction contract administration. So if you haven't watched the other two parts of the series, part one, where we introduce construction contracts and part two, where we look at the mechanics of construction contract administration, I recommend going back and watching those two videos because it'll give this video much more context. So where are we up to on our journey of construction contract administration? Well, we now understand the purpose of role of and contracts on construction projects. We understand that they're there to facilitate collaboration between different parties. And we also understand the process of administrating a contract. We understand business as usual contract management. So just the regular ongoing tasks like dealing with payment claims, managing a schedule, insurances, security, these sorts of things. And we also understand how to manage change and issues, how they arise. We understand what variations are. We understand the different types of variations. And so now what I'm going to talk about are what are some tools and techniques we can apply to manage contracts more effectively. So these are going to be holistic tools, principles we can use in addition to the contract administration techniques I spoke about in part two. We're going to talk about ways we can maximize the chances of achieving our project outcomes and also minimize any of our risks. The first one I want to talk about because I think it's by far the most important is that good project management equals good contract management. So what I mean by this is that projects under duress are more likely to have strained commercial relationships. As an example, say you're on a project and you're going over budget, the first thing you're going to look at are all the different ways you can save money, which is inevitably going to mean looking at your supply chain, working out ways you can reduce costs, negotiating more aggressively on pricing, and all these sorts of things. You're really going to look at saving money in ways that's probably not realistic, and it's going to strain any contractual relationships. On the other hand, you're going to look at the head contract, and you're going to go hunting for variations and where you can claw back your profit margin. So the first thing I'll say is effectively managing a project and by managing a project overall, I mean managing the schedule, managing the budget and all these sorts of things is going to lead to just inevitably lead to better contract management because the project's going to run more smoothly. So what I mean by good project management is in a sense of construction projects, I'm really talking about what I like to think of as disciplined delivery. So this is really having control over your project, understanding the scope and managing the project properly. So it's that's setting up the project properly with a proper work breakdown structure and project control system, doing an effective handover from the tender team so you understand what in, went into the estimate, how the schedule was developed, how the project was initially planned out, the development and maintenance of the project schedule. So really creating a plan of how you're going to deliver in the project and keeping that update and relevant and not just using it as an administrative task monitoring and controlling costs from the very beginning. So tracking all your budgets, looking at how much you're spending and forecast your cost to complete. So you really understand how and why you're spending money and you're not leaving it to the last minute when you've blown your budget dealing with these issues and basically just having systems and processes you're following in all domains of the project. So quality control, safety, and then finally, just managing stakeholders. So working with the client, working with your suppliers and working with any personnel or external parties impacted by the project. So really, if you're managing the project really, really well, it's more likely that contract management will just happen organically, like good contract management will just happen organically. And the counter of that is if you're managing the project like a disaster, you don't have any quality systems, you don't have a proper schedule, that it's going to be almost impossible to manage the contracts. The next thing that's going to make your construction contract administration more effective is good communication. So as we know, contracts are always administered by two parties. There's a principal, someone paying for something to get done, and a contractor, someone providing the goods and services. So the relationship between those, these two parties is absolutely critical and effective communication throughout all stages of the relationship from contract formation through to project delivery is going to enhance your contract administration. So why is this? It's because effectively contracts are tools to collaborate. So if both parties are happy with the work being done by the other party, they understand where the project's up to, everyone has a shared understanding of the key bits of project information, 
your contract administration is just going to flow down from it. So if I use a very specific example of talking about the schedule, if you're maintaining an effective schedule and you're walking your client through the journey of how you're delivering the project, exactly where you're up to in each task, you're presenting them a dashboard and effectively you're distilling and communicating the project information well, it's going to be easier for them to understand where you're up to, to map this against your progress claims and your progress claims are going to be approved much more simply. So the counter of this being that if you're not passing on information to your client, your schedule doesn't make sense, you're not presenting them with dashboards and information that shows where the project's up to, it's going to make your contract administration harder. They're going to be less likely to approve variations because the schedule is not going to make sense to them because they're not going to be understanding the project. So really having regular ongoing meetings, talking about important issues and basically not focusing on the commercial and legal issues when you have an issue come up on the project, but you're looking at more of maintaining a relationship between the two parties. So when you come up with an issue or a variation on site, you're calling them, you're discussing these things with them, and then you're documenting it. Because obviously it's important to document the, these things in a written format, but you're also discussing it with them and looking at things from their perspective as well. So I just think communicating effectively will make your contract administration much more effective. The next tool for effective construction contract administration, and it just naturally flows on from communication, is negotiation. So what I mean by this is during the execution of the contract, you're always going to come across situations where your best interests are different from your client's or your subcontractor's best interests. They're going to put in a claim for a variation and you're going to have to approve it. You're going to have to try and negotiate the best possible position for your party. And so it's very typical when you have these sorts of negotiations because the way contracts are structured is the outcomes quite often lose-lose. So the more you pay in a variation, it's the more money that's coming out of your budget. So the way to deal with negotiation in construction contracts is you should make every attempt to settle things without becoming too commercial. That means talking issues through, understanding the other party's point of view, and basically resolving things in the absolute simplest way possible. You don't want to get to a situation where you're starting to send commercial letters and getting the contracts team involved. It's much better to negotiate things built off the relationship you've built with the other party. And if you have situations where negotiations fail and you go into disputes, it is going to cause way more damage to the project than the original issue probably would have. So why do negotiations fail? Well, first one I see a lot is people being too aggressive. At the end of the day, you want to work with other people. You don't want to try and overpower them and bully them into your point of view. You should always be considering the other party's point of view. So you have to remember that it is a relationship between people and they're going to have a different perspective. They're going to have a different outcome. And it's important to consider where their point of view comes from. Failing to be flexible. So in the way we negotiate, we should be aware of how the other party, what they want to get out of it. And the same really is failing to consider the other party's point of view. But if we can do things to accommodate their position, that don't cost us anything, we should definitely look to adopt those. Ego and reputation always play a big part in negotiations. People don't want to admit they're wrong. People always want to get the last word in. So if you can do anything to counter your feelings of aggression or ego, it's going to help with your negotiations. But really, negotiations and communication, the same principles apply. It's about really just trying to work with the other parties and not necessarily considering them as subcontractors or suppliers. You want to consider them as delivery partners and work together to get the job done. The next one is document and record keeping. I can't tell you how many times I've been administrating a contract, it's come to delivery, and then someone has said, oh, well, this was agreed at tender time, but you can't find any records or evidence of it anywhere. So that's why an essential part of contract management is documents and record keeping. So documents attached to the contract, you'll have meetings, you'll have correspondence, you should record all of this documentation. It'll be critical when you're coming to negotiating things later on, being able to basically understand the original agreement and how the agreement changes during construction. So all documentation should be recorded. It's absolutely critical whether you do this in TeamBinder or you just do something as simple as every time you send an email, saving the email in a folder, recording minutes of meetings, all these sorts of things are going to be absolutely critical to documenting the agreement as it changes during the administration of the contract. 
The final one I want to touch on in the context of contract administration is to understand what risk is and thinking about the transfer of risk between parties. So risk management is a broader topic than contract administration, but basically it's the idea of being responsible for certain uncertainties that may eventuate. And so one of the big problems we see is both risks transferred to parties who aren't able to manage them and also, on the other hand, not all the risks associated with works transferring. So something you should always think about when you're managing a contract is if, number one, is that the party best place to manage the risk should be responsible for the risk. And the second one you should think of is always trying to transfer a risk. So if you're a general contractor, you sign a head contract out and you're responsible for inclement weather in your contract, if you're signing a contract with a subcontractor, Ideally, you would also want to make them responsible for inclement weather. So that's how you protect yourself commercially. So as I said, think about risk management in the context of contract administration. And it's an incredibly important concept to get your head around that really contracts, as much as they are tools to deliver scope, they're also tools to manage risk. That's all I wanted to touch on. Some really simple strategies you can use to manage your contracts more effectively. And remember, this lecture was in the context of the two previous ones I did talking about the basics of construction contracts and also the process of administrating them. If you like this lecture, if you thought it was interesting, I'll put a link in the description to the slides so you can download them. But we've also got a three hour online course that's completely free on construction contract administration that I'll put a link for in the description of the video. And just quickly, my name's Tim. I run a website called Construct IQ, where we teach the fundamentals of construction contract management. We've helped over 20,000 students on that journey. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. And yeah, if you liked it, check out the full course and stay tuned for more. Thanks a lot.